Each year, more and more students from all over the world come to the United States to achieve their academic goals. Leaving their families behind, they travel miles away from their native land to experience a new life. But how different is it to live in the United States compared to their own country? The United States ranks as number one destination for international students, having a total of 660,581 students, increasing more and more every year. Here are some of the stories of some international students from the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. I'm Khalil, digital film and video production student at the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. I'm from the island of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, my name is David Granados. Uh, I'm from Mexico. Well, actually, I'm here from the United States. I was born in California, but I live all my life in Mexico. Therefore, I'm, I consider myself Mexican. And uh, I'm in media arts and animation. My name is Carolyn Randall. My major is graphic design. I'm here getting my bachelor's. And I come from South Africa. Hi, my name is Roland Andomagba. I'm studying media arts and animation from Arts Institute of Philadelphia. From uh, my name is Hussam. Uh, I'm originally from Saudi Arabia. Uh, I'm a student here at the Art Institute. I'm doing graphic design. Trinidad and Tobago is a small twin island republic that is basically at the bottom of the chain of Caribbean islands. It's also the closest island to South America within the Caribbean chain, so we have a lot of influences from multiple countries and you know, on multiple cultures. So the best way to describe it is a multicultural mix of love, art and good vibes. Trinidad is pretty laid back. We have a lot of beaches. You know, that's one of the things that I miss the most, the waters. We have mountains unlike Florida. That's one of the major things that I miss the most about home, the mountains, being able to escape and go back to the mountains and just remove yourself from the hustle and bustle of every day and just relax by a waterfall or a spring or something with your friends and you know, and just enjoy that time. That's one of the things that I miss the most, the water in Trinidad and the mountains. Well, Mexico is a really big country. Uh, it has, it's beautiful, it has really bad parts obviously. Um, the part where I'm from, I'm actually from Mexico City, and it's like huge. It's a huge city. In fact, it's I think the third uh, biggest city in the world. Uh, it's uh, really chaotic. Um, what I like about my country, at least from the parts where I have been, is uh, it's it's really different. It's diverse, especially diverse. Like each state has like its own thing, and I love it. Just a little thing about South Africa and kind of where I'm from. I grew up in Johannesburg, which is a major city in South Africa. Uh, I grew up in a middle class background. Um, it's an inland city which is built on a mine dump. So it's, it's not the prettiest city, but as far as going out and meeting people, it's great. Um, as you know, South Africa is very diverse in cult culturally wise. We have a lot of different types of cultures and people mixing. So it's kind of like a melting pot. Um, I grew up actually during the transition from apartheid into the new South Africa and so that was a bit of a struggle um, in the beginning, just kind of bringing people together. Um, it, so it wasn't, it wasn't very easy. As far as South Africa goes with other things, I mean it's a great country to live in. Uh, we have shops, I know a lot of people always ask me, you know, do you have a, a a, a giraffe is a pet or a pet lion, no. <laughs> it is a major city, we drive cars, we have shops, we do all the things that everybody else does. So it's, it's not like mud huts and uh, shanty towns as everybody always uh, pictures South Africa to be. Nigeria is located in West Africa. It's, one, it's the most populous country in Africa. We're very rich in oil and in crude oil and we do uh, cassava too, we're very big in that. And also we live in a temperate uh, atmosphere. It's very hot there and uh, 
It's a very good place, it's like awesome. It's filled with a lot of cultures. And we have, we speak about 209 languages. And uh, about three, three of, like three, there are four main tribes among those tribes that speak the 209 languages. And it is, it's kind of, it's, they are kind of like the leaders among like the most popular tribes among the ones in Nigeria. They're called the Yorubas, the Hausas, and the Igbos. And uh, the tribe I'm from is Efik. Saudi Arabia is uh, one of the biggest countries in producing oil to the world. Uh, it's located in the middle of the world, somewhere in the middle. And what I really like about my country is the food. And what I don't really like about my country, the close-minded people. I chose the U.S. because it's close, you know. Um, not to mention, within the current field that I'm in, everyone wants to come here because of Hollywood, obviously. Hollywood has made the world and the video production world a lot more fancy than you would think, you know. Coming here, I, I chose video production because of the opportunities that maybe come available to me due to networking with people and being with people and around people in the industry as well, you know. Fort Lauderdale and not Hollywood because I just wanted to be close to home, you know. Um, I think for me to leave in, for, leave in for the first time from Trinidad and going to California would have been too much of a shocker for me, you know. And that's at least within my opinions at that point in time. You know, California was a little bit too far for me, so I chose the next best thing, which was Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. It's closer to home, same type of tropical weather, can't really deal with the cold too much, so. I decided to come here to Florida, uh, mainly because this was my only option. Uh, I met this person that used to uh, promote the Art Institute from here and the one from Miami. So uh, later on, I got a scholarship that only applied for this school. Uh, so that was the only reason of why I decided to come here. I would have liked to go to California after all, I have family there. But uh, that really didn't matter really. So that's why I came here. I have always wanted to visit the United States ever since I was little. I grew up with a lot of American TV and a lot of British TV and I've always wanted to travel. So actually way back in 2006, um, I had just graduated from culinary school. I went to culinary school in Stellenbosch in the Winelands in Cape Town. And after that, I realized, you know what, I'd love to come to the United States. So I actually got on to the internet and found a um, performing arts camp. And I started working as a, as a basically as a counselor during the summertime. Um, in the United States and that's pretty much what brought me over here. I actually didn't have a set plan of like I'm going to come to the United States and study. It just all kind of fell together for me. Uh, the, pretty much the reason is I got a scholarship and so the person who um, gave me the scholarship lives in Fort Lauderdale and so I was just like I'm coming to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> so it was like again it was very serendipitous I think that's the correct word to use. Um, so like yeah I, I had no like I'm going to come here and go there it just like fell into my lap pretty much. Uh, at first, I was supposed to, I wanted to study in England, but I mean, England, I mean, there, I knew so many people in England, so I chose here because I wanted an adventure. And <laughs> my first school, because before I transferred to Fort Lauderdale, I was in Boca Raton, and I really went there because it was the beach, you know, like watching too many American movies. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was going to be like hella fun, but I mean, it was fun, but it was just me being young and stuff. So now that I know what I want to do, it's, it's cool here. I like it a lot. Hmm. I think I wasn't planning to come to the United States, actually. I was thinking to move out of my country to continue my studies since I was in high school, I believe. And I was so glad because my dad also had, had the idea, the same idea and the same thinking. Thank God he's open-minded. So. Yeah, so uh, uh, I was so confused and my dad even, he was so confused. 
we were like trying to choose uh, different countries whether we're gonna go to the United States to Canada to to uh, New Zealand to uh, German we were so confused and lost but finally he decided and he came up with the USA uh, it was my father decision I have no idea why did he pick it but I believe because one of my cousins uh, used to live here up north in Pensacola somewhere there so he thought it might be a good idea to be close from them in fact I never seen them <laughs> no, for real. Initially, it started out as depression, <laughs> I guess. That's the best way to explain it at that point in time. But the longer that you stay away from them, isn't necessarily that it gets easier. It's just that you understand a little bit more, you know what I mean? Distance is, is only part-time, you know? Especially my current situation where I'm just here for school. So when I'm done, I'm going back home. So for me, like I live on that. I live for those days where I could go on vacation. I live for those days where I know that I'm going back home soon enough, you know? And that's one of the few things that actually keep me going. The fact that when I'm finished here, when I go back, I know my family's gonna be so proud of me. The fact that I've been here for so long by myself, you know? So it's hard, but is something that I think it helps you grow for the better. I think being far away from a family hasn't been really a challenge. Uh, I know for some people it's really tough and it was sort somehow tough for me too but it was not as bad. Uh, I think I have never really been depressed or sad or anything uh, and I think it's actually a good change being able to to live on your own and take your own decisions and know how they actually affect you when you do the bad ones and things like that but overall has has been a good experience being far away from my family is extremely difficult um, pretty much live through skype sessions or viber conversations um, on those special apps so it's 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 definitely difficult uh, you don't have the support system of coming home and just going to have coffee or you know, just chatting to your mom on the couch. So I found that support system very difficult not to have. Um, but in other ways, you know, it's made me a lot more independent um, and made me grow up a lot quicker than maybe some people who have, you know, stayed in their own country. Okay, being far away from my family is the toughest. It's really the toughest because I was like the center of attention back home and I was taking care of a lot of responsibilities back home, even though I was the, the forgotten one, the one in the middle, <laughs> but still, uh, so it, it was so hard, it feels so bad, terrible. Well, my first reaction to being out here was a lot harder than I expected it to be, you know, because you know, I'm, so, I'm fresh off of this island, never left before, so a lot of what I am and who I am, I'm bringing, you know what I mean? So meeting people for the first time and speaking to people for the first time was a little bit of a bother because of my accent and all of that, but the more people spoke to me and the more people welcomed me, it became a lot easier to fit in, I guess, you know what I mean? And then I quickly realized that it's not so much different to back home. People may be different, languages may be different, you know, time schedules may be different, but genuinely people are just about their business and trying to get things done, you know, so. Uh, the first day moving here, uh, it was a nightmare. Uh, well, that day actually I saw my mom crying for the first time ever in my life, and up to now I haven't seen her again uh, crying. I haven't seen her, yeah. Although, uh, well, after that, we basically, my dad came with me here to the States because he uh, came along to help me out to find a place because we actually didn't even have a place for myself to stay. And we only had two days to find it. And we were like really short in money. And basically it was chaotic. It was like a nightmare, truly. Uh, after a while, we, or after like hours of on, being on the computer trying to find places, I finally, or we finally found this place, which was uh, really close to the school, luckily. And I stayed there and then my dad left and that was kind of 
depressing because that's like you basically see someone leaving you and you're like on your own at that very second. It was hard at the airport saying goodbye to my parents and kind of knowing that I, I wasn't going to see them in a really long time. Um, South Africa is a very long way away. It's about a 15 hour flight. So it's not like you can just hop on and suddenly be home. So I had mixed feelings. I was excited um, about my new adventure. But then on the other hand, I was very upset that I was almost closing the chapter on um, my family and all my history back home in South Africa. So it was very mixed feelings. Okay, the number one thing, I mean, in terms of like the first time I came here, see normally in Nigeria, where we are taught like to greet people, like come say good morning, like when we see someone, just a stranger, but just greet them out of respect. So when I first came here and I'm greeting everyone, everyone was looking at me like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm just saying greeting, I'm just greeting you, good morning, and then they look at me where like I'm some stranger, just try, I don't know, but <laughs> I had to stop doing that. <laughs> oh, oh my God, my first day here was like, as I told you, like, wow, like awesome, unbelievable. At the same time, it was tough because I remember being at the airport with the immigration stuff. Uh, I don't want to remember that. I'll tell people every time and every day if there's two things that I took away from this experience and this journey that I entered. It's patience and tolerance. Tolerance for what you see around you and accepting what is around you and understanding that this is the current society that you live in. And patience for understanding that nothing lasts forever. This experience has changed me in the sense that I have learned a lot. Uh, a lot of boundaries have been broken, especially things that regarding culture and knowing how other people are. Uh, basically, it has I've always been an open-minded person, but this has definitely up, made it wider. Uh, I used to judge a lot, but not anymore because I have seen so many things or so many cultures that it's like, yeah, it's, it's really pointless to be, to judge based on how people look or where they come from. So that has changed ever since I came here. It's made me, this experience has, I think, pushed me past my comfort zones. It's made me a better person in the way that I view life differently. I, I think I'm able to look at different cultures and be interested by other things around me and not get stuck in your comfort zone of being at home and this is all you know in that small bubble that you live in or that you grow up in. Uh, traveling and living in another country forces you to, I think, view your value system, where you come from, all those things that make you who you are. Um, so for me, being here has definitely made me appreciate life and where I came from a lot more than maybe if I just stayed in South Africa. I mean, normally I used to be very, 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 very quiet. I'm still very quiet, but I mean, I just know when to open my mouth <laughs> when it, it comes to it. And then normally I do is to like, go and attend events now I'm like towards like trying to understand and know history I was into towards a lot of stuff now which like and then explore different avenues just to like broaden my horizon in terms of education and my state of mind. This experience had changed me a lot actually uh, yeah it, it, it opened my mind opened my mind to new different uh, views, new different perspectives. I could see things differently now. Uh, even myself, I feel like I developed more mentally and physically. My advice to anyone coming out here is about maintaining balance. You know what I mean? balancing a social life as well as an academic life you know it's, it, it could be hard but a lot of people spend so much time chasing grades that they become bitter in the experience itself you know what I mean and they completely forget the experience of, of actually being here and, and meeting people and networking and learning from people you know so just be a little bit more conscientious about how you deal with people 
don't just guard them off because you're trying to remain focused on your grades you know what I mean eventually you're going to realize that these are the same people that you're going to have to call back to help you in your long run you know? so try to develop good relationships and try to be good to people out here tolerate people most definitely uh, for any person out there who would like to come here as a student uh, the first advice I would I would suggest is be prepared to do a lot of sacrifices, uh, personal sacrifices and mentally. Uh, they have to be prepared because it's, it's 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 a tough experience, especially for those who live their families or or basically a country. If it's way different than this, let's say people who, who come from uh, India. As actually, I have a friend who came from there and he suffered a lot because it's really it's a huge difference. But uh, even though it's a it's painful it's also really good in the future it's worth it so definitely go for it why not I guess just believe in yourself trust your instincts um, definitely do it if you can because it's, it is a life-changing experience not because of what you get out of maybe materialistically or whatever it's about like the people that you meet and those experiences that when you look back on your life you can say I did it I pushed myself to go beyond what I expected and I guess I guess that's all I could say to somebody uh, my, my advice is once you come here make sure <laughs> you know what you're chasing because I mean there's so many happening here that you can get distracted so just keep on your goal and try and relax and enjoy your life my advice might be uh, to the students who want to come to the USA don't be shy that's basically just don't be shy don't be afraid to 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 fall in love no, I'm don't be afraid to, to do a mistake don't be afraid just open your mind and open your thoughts and you will do fine